Sundays these days looks just like this. I wake up, I make myself a hot cup of tea, I open up all the blinds and windows to let the sun in, to let the fresh air in, and I welcome the new. I welcome the fresh, I welcome the brand new start. And I completely engulf myself in everything that brings me joy starting with my babies, my plants. And um, this is also a glimpse of things I'd rather be doing instead of dating. In case anybody was wondering how that's going, this is exactly how that's going. <laughs> I'd rather wake up and dance around the kitchen with my plants and, and instead of dance around uh, this dating game because it's wild out here even wilder than how it looks inside my apartment with all of these things um, in the truest fashion of living my authentic self this is just where I'd rather be right now this is real this is pure and this is what's bringing me joy so yeah, that's how that's going. I think my plants are so important to me, not just because I like them so much. And sometimes I ask myself, why am I so obsessed with these things? It's just a plant, right? It's just a leaf. I think they are also symbolic of all of the things that I've ever wanted in my life that have almost died. I guess you could say they're symbolic of some of my dreams as it pertains to relationships, as it pertains to me wanting to be a parent, as it pertains to my love for art and my dream of being a full-time professional artist, as it pertains to all of the things that I've ever wanted to do, own property, build a house, have a garden, have a dog, all the things that I love. Um, I felt that over the last several years, none of those things have really been able to come to fruition. And this is a reminder that if I work as hard to bring back to life each one of those dreams and keep those alive and tend to them the way that I tend to these plants, anything is possible. The success that I'm seeing in my plants right now has not come easy. I didn't just wake up with a green thumb. I've always had like a turquoise thumb in the sense of I have always had an interest in not just me but my whole family. We love to try and grow things and it has not always worked out. I have lost a lot of money and time and resources and getting to this point where I'm at now. I have lost a lot of plants. <laughs> I've killed a lot. I've had multiples of some of these plants. Um, and some of them, like Big Boy, my one of my favorite plants, that plant was down to two leaves. My fiddly fig falcon, he was down to two leaves to where I really didn't think that they were going to survive. And not only did they survive, 
They survive transitions, moves, weather, <laughs> poor uh, environment conditions, poor lighting. And look at them now. I am so amazed and so proud um, and so inspired by how they've made a total turnaround. And that has encouraged me to keep going, keep learning, keep doing what I'm doing in order to like cultivate growth and health in each one of my plants that I collect. I love them all so much. So yeah, my plants are very much like for me a symbol and a reminder of like everything else that I want to do in my life that if I just keep at it, don't give up on it. Don't just throw it away because it looks like it's on its last leg. It's not over until it's over. <laughs> And if you're a plant lover or have ever had a plant, you know when it's over, right? But if there's still a little bit of green, you don't get rid of it yet. You don't throw it away yet. You don't give up yet. And um, so that's definitely one of my resolutions for 2024 is applying this same pressure that I'm applying to these plants to everything else that's in my life. And so far, all of my energy has been going into the IVF process and me trying to um, be a mom. But I have already declared that a victory. I've already won that, even though I'm still in, in, in the fight, I'm declaring a victory. So once that has happened, and then it's on to the next thing, then it's on to work for the career that I want the professional life that I want then it's on to you know me cultivating my dreams in owning a home and not just any home but a very specific very curated very beautiful home that is so authentic to me and my heart um, and then after that and then after that and then after that I'm just gonna keep going but I'm definitely this is practice what you see here is practice it's work it's commitment. It's the only, well, one of the only things that I'm committed to right now. And so I don't know. If anybody ever asks me why I do what I do, why I have so many freaking plants and like what my, what my deal is with them, before I wouldn't really be able to say much other than I love them. I just love plants. Um, I'm going crazy right here because I, <laughs> as much as I love them, they are still plants. They are still wild living things. And within their little ecosystems are ecosystems. And I don't play that shit in my apartment. So yes, I found that one of my plants had a serious problem, a problem that is different from what I'm used to usually. It's like a gnat thing or a spider mite thing or I don't know. One of my plants has even had thrips. That's actually the big one there, the philodendron hope, the one that kind of looks like it has fingers that's had thrips and kind of consistently does, but right now it's fine. One of my smaller monsteras I think has, um, what do you call those white furry things? Oh gosh, not aphids. I don't know, whatever the, the, the common 
pest that's like white and furry. It looks like cotton, but it's actually not cotton. It is alive and it moves. And I saw a cotton ball move on one of the plants and I freaked out. And yes, I'm sure you're cringing because obviously I have an infected plant amongst all of my other plants all together. And that is a huge no-no. Um, do as I say, not as I do, and keep your infected plants away from everybody else. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. But uh, sometimes I learn lessons hard, and this is this is where we're at. So everybody was getting soaked in uh, in my neem oil, and then one by one, everybody was getting their leaves scrubbed. So not to worry. Hopefully. Look you guys, Monty put out a new baby, a beautiful new baby, and I had no idea he was even pregnant. I had no idea that he was putting out a new leaf. So awesome, so proud of you. I wake up every day and the first thing that I do is look around at all of my my babies and I just like pat myself on the back. I'm just so proud of what I've been able to to do in um, a short amount of time, I guess, since being here and I don't know, going through this journey. They've gone through this journey with me, the journey called life. Um, they've been with me, some of them before, during, and after the breakup. And they've been here before, during, and after IVF. And difficulties at work, and difficulties within my family, and difficulties in every aspect. They've been with me. And, um... I'm just so proud at like what I've been able to do. It's definitely a reflection of some very hard work that I've been putting into myself also. I've I've been working so hard on myself. Like people don't even like nobody really even knows how every minute, every day is is work. I'm always trying to be the very best version of myself. Um, trying to be the best human that I can be and it's hard it's really hard um, but I kind of approach everything that I do every decision that I make with is first of all is this the best thing for me is this promoting like peace and positivity and like is this what I need right now I have learned and I'm still practicing putting myself first um, and just pouring into myself and uh, trying to sift through and unpack a little bit more who I am in this season because we're ever evolving right and um, I definitely recognize every time I'm in a season of transition and once that happens and I have to <laughs> kind of not only reintroduce myself and figure out how I'm going to represent this version of myself, but get, just get to know this version of me. Just a long, uh, long-winded talk about <laughs> the connection between me as a person and my life 
and all of my plants. Today was the first day where temperatures dropped here in Arizona. And when I say drop, I mean like the high for the week was 80 degrees and it was absolutely gorgeous outside. And so I've got all of the windows open per usual, but like windows and doors and everything open for fresh air, the AC is off. It's nice and breezy outside. As you can see, all of my plants are kind of just like moving with the wind and swaying and enjoying like outdoors in. And I just wanted to lay in the light. And so that's what I did. Laid in the light with my plants and enjoyed my Sunday morning. I bring up dating earlier on because that is like the season that I'm struggling with, I guess, right now. Dating sucks, doesn't it? Like, if you're doing it, if you know, you know. It's just awful. I mean, it's wild out here. It's wild boots out here, Jade. Um, I hate it. I hate it so much. And... I fear that as a millennial, this is just the way now, and I loathe it. I don't want it to be this way, but I feel like what what are the other ways to meet other... Not, it's not just other people, right? So I, I don't want to say what are the other ways to meet people, and some of you might say, oh, just go outside, or oh, just do this, oh, you can meet people anywhere. No, 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 no. Um, not just people. I'm looking for a very, very specific demographic of people to, to explore, right? In, in, in the dating scene. And it's not on these crummy apps. And like where, like where, where, right? Where? Um, I feel like it's either the apps or it's like, I don't know, in bars and clubs, but I'm not. I'm not drinking like lately here and there I've had a glass of wine or I've had a cocktail but I'm really not drinking so what sense does it make for me to go out to and especially like by myself I don't have any friends right now I have not put any work into any of my relationships and you'll have to watch my other videos to understand why but like I, like I'm not gonna go I'm pretty comfortable with doing things myself but for the most part I'm not gonna go to social events like clubs and bars by myself to like I don't know meet people especially not drinking that just makes me weird and, and I feel uncomfortable and my anxiety and oh my god no um I don't know guys it just sucks and I I honestly I'm learning not only how to do this thing called dating right now but I've got my pinky toe in the pool. Like, I'm not fully committed to it. Like, I don't want to, really, but I do. I'm, I'm curious. Like, I don't really like anybody unless I like you, but I'm not liking anybody. Like, I'm just not committed to it at all. And these days, you talk to someone and they want to get married, like, soon. Or they want to do this, soon. They, and I'm just like, no. <laughs> I just want to know if you're crazy. Can we start there? What's your name and are you crazy? And let's talk about that. Like, let's talk about what you want for yourself 
over the next five years. Let's talk about what you want out of a, another person or a, in a relationship. Like, can we talk? Nobody wants to just talk for a minute and just see if it's gonna make sense or not. I've never kind of, like I've never been that way. Granted, I've never really dated, I don't think, like this, ever. So I also feel still like a, a baby deer, but I don't know. I don't know why I'm saying this. I'm, I'm struggling out here. And it's to the point where I'm just, I don't, I'm probably not gonna continue it. I'm not gonna do it. Just, I'm not gonna do it. Of course, Jackie was like, well, you know, practice. That's how you learn. And I'm like, yeah, but it sucks out here. So <laughs> kind of don't want to do it anymore. Like sports, right? Um, never really been good at it. Tried it, didn't like it at first, quit it. Didn't ever go back. Ugh. I don't know. I've got a lot of feelings around that. I thought that I was ready to like explore and see like who's out there and like what's happening, but I'm really not. I'm really not over my past, like at all. In fact, this dating experience has done the exact opposite of what I was hoping to do, which was to kind of help me heal and get over and, and move on, and it has done the opposite. So um, I'm just gonna put the whole thing on the back burner for now, I think, and um, just chill out, cool out with my plants. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll be the crazy plant lady for a little while, because I'd rather this than the, like be someone that's just talking to a bunch of weirdos and crazies. And um, maybe those were the wrong words to say, but if you know, you know. If you're out here on these these sites just just looking for someone normal, you'll you'll you know what I mean by there is no one normal. So don't cancel me. If I'm ever looking at my phone smiling, it's not because I got a really cute text message from a sexy individual. It's because I'm looking at babies or puppies or something funny. That's all. Nothing more. No play. At least not from anybody that I would like. I have my 2023 Pride shirt on, which I love this shirt. I, I'm really not a, a fan of like baby blue, but this year's shirt, the design was really cool, loved it. I'm wearing the Pride 2023 shirts for my company, um, for Phoenix, but I did not participate in Pride at all, which sucks on one hand because I really wanted to hang out, have fun, join in on the parade. I usually try to walk in on the parade, but it was on a day that wasn't going to work. So um, the parade was out and then I thought about it and I'm like, you know, it's still kind of hot out. Like this is before the temperature drop. Pride was the weekend right before the temperature drop and it was still extremely hot. So I was like, okay, I missed the parade. It probably would have been difficult anyways because it was still warm out. Um, and last year's parade went on and on and on and on and on forever. Uh, I can't imagine this year's. And then I thought, well, do I really want to spend all that money on a Pride Festival ticket? And it's going to be warm out. At least it's not going to be raining and muddy at the park, but it's going to be warm out. And like, I would be going by myself, which is lame. Like, you don't go to Pride by yourself. It's so lame. Um, like, what would be the point? And the performers this year were not any, like, the entertainment was not up my alley at all. So it's just like, ah, unfortunately, not going to go to the Pride Festival. So then I decided, well, maybe I'll just do, like, some after parties. But, girl, none of that happened. None of it. None of it, none of it. I, uh, I, I did have the energy 
to get up and be outside. But after I met up with one of my friends on one of the pride nights on like before the weekend started, uh, like everything else just fell through. So that sucked, but I don't know. No big deal. There's always next year, I guess. But my boss brought me some pride gear back cause he went and, um, brought me some gear back, including a shirt and some bracelets and some other crap. So I was grateful for that. I love a t-shirt. So I have to make a conscious effort, like I really have to write this on my hand to remember to thank all of you for watching and for subscribing and liking. Um, even though YouTube has been out for a million years, it is still a thing that if you don't ask your viewers to participate and engage, they won't. I put my hand up. I'm one of them. I have my favorite channels and YouTubers and still to this day forget to like and engage with them. I'll watch a whole three hour long video and just forget not to be like malicious or anything. I just forget. I just, it's just not a habit that I have. So I am going to get in the habit of not only showing my favorite channels some love, but I'm getting the going to get in the habit of asking you uh, as a viewer and subscriber to please, if you're a subscriber already, like this video, comment, engage with me, chat with me. I might look like I will bite. I might cuss like a sailor and sound like I will bite, but unless you mess with me, I will not bite you. I will not sting you as a Scorpio. I, I won't unless you don't mess with me now. Let's be clear. Okay. Um, don't mess with me, but I'm, I'm a gentle person. I'm a kind heart. So I would love to hear from you. I would love to engage with you. Please like, if you're not subscribed already, and this is your first time to my channel, welcome to the craziness. And actually it's not crazy. I'm just hormonal. Go back and check out my other videos for more context on that. I'm not crazy. I promise you I'm not. It's just a lot of shit has gone down in my life and I'm hormonal and I've got a lot going on and I'm overwhelmed. Um, welcome to my brain. Welcome to my world. I would love it if you became a subscriber. Um, and I would love it if you like shared my content or shared this channel with another hormonal person. Um, that would be great. So thanks so much. 